welcome back to Excel Exposure. Today's lesson we will be going over formula auditing. So if you go to your formulas toolbar here you'll see there's an area called formula auditing and this is a few useful features uh, one of which is the evaluate formula button, uh, show formulas as an option and you can see the shortcut there which is really handy, a watch window which I'll explain later and then a few other things that help you look at your formula in different ways and see how it interacts with the rest of the spreadsheet. First I'll show real quickly how to do show formulas. All you have to do is click this button and everything that's below in the spreadsheet will switch from being the result to being what the formula is in the cell. So I'll hit show formulas. You'll see all these sums show up as sums. Same with these averages. I've also got some index match stuff going on over here. The shortcut for that, it is control, and it's the one underneath the tilde. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's not an apostrophe, although it looks like that. And you can switch pretty easily between the two. It's usually right above everyone's tab key. So that's just a quick way to easily, if you're looking at a bunch of, of data on, on a sheet, and you want to see, are all these formulas correct? I don't want to have to click into each cell and see. I just want to show me the formulas, and I can kind of look through and, and see what's up. Then there's also the evaluate formula button. This can be used if you have a relatively complicated formula like this index match one that I used uh, in the last lesson. You can click this evaluate formula button and you'll see the there's an evaluation box here. You could step into it, but what we're going to do is do evaluate. So if I hit evaluate, you'll see that one of these is underlined, which is the index area. First, it's going to convert these named ranges and uh, other references to their values. So index area that'll change to, once you click evaluate, it'll change that to be what the range is. You'll see next is M5, so that'll, that should say student 6, and then match rows, which is actually B5 to B15. You hit evaluate, and you'll see how the computer thinks about it, how it, how it goes through the problem. So it's, it's done the match, the middle match, which is a 6, and then it's also doing a match on test 4 and then a columns area. So you'll see now that'll be an index with 6 and 4, and this is helpful if you want to see if you have a formula that isn't working and you want to see where is it breaking down or why isn't it working the way you think it is, you can kind of see how the formula is structured. I'll show you again and we'll, we'll hear. So we'll say evaluate. So it ends up being 59. If we go to a different one just to continue on, I'll do the evaluate formula here and you'll see how it works again. So again, evaluate, it'll go through, it'll change our references that we have to either the value or the range that we're referring to. Then it'll go through, this is going to now perform the match function which puts an 8 in, then the, the index has a second value of 0. What it's going to do is go ahead and, and grab that range, which is C12 to H12, and then average it, which comes out to 62.67. And so whenever you're confused as to what a formula really does, you can kind of walk through it. I use the evaluate formula to see how it breaks down. And another really useful portion is the trace precedence and trace dependence. So for trace precedence, if you have a cell selected, this uh, this index match that we evaluated earlier, and I go up to trace precedence, it'll tell you every other cell or every other reference that is made within the cell with the, via these arrows. So you'll see that I've got, when you double click on any of the lines, it will show you the specific range that it's pointing to. So this formula here, it refers to match columns which is this range. So when you click, double click on that arrow, you'll see it highlighted. And since I have it named, it already switched in the name box. This can be really useful if you're, if you're using really complicated formulas and want to make sure it's not pulling in something very random. Another way that this can be used to help, and help you out is if you have something that refers to another sheet. So let me go ahead and click, you click remove arrows to get rid of the ones you've already put down. Now I'll go ahead and on top of this resulting test score, I'm going to add, let's see, just this 25 low score. Just something on another sheet, just to give you an example of how that looks with the arrows. So, if I do trace precedence, you'll see there's another arrow that points to a mini spreadsheet. If you double click on that, it should open up with, with the link to where it's going to be. You could scroll over here to see what it is, and then if you hit OK, it'll bring you right there and show you where it is. And again, so you double click here and on the uh, arrow and then you could double click there and it'll go right to it and show you where it is. 
So that's helpful if you have if you have a formula that's referring to multiple sheets or multiple ranges within one sheet, you can get a, a pretty good idea of how it's flowing through. So I'll hit remove all arrows. Then let's look at trace dependence. So actually what I will do is I'll go on the conditional one. Since we just referred to this one, we know that there's a dependent. If we click trace dependence, you should see it will refer us back to the other sheet where the formula came from. So you can see it going both ways. And tracing precedence is everything that leads into a cell. Tracing dependence is everything that then uses that cell later on. And you can add in as many arrows as you want. And just make sure at the very end you hit remove arrows. I'm going to remove it from this page. And so that's mainly what's going on in the formula auditing menu. I want to quickly mention the watch window. The watch window, this can be something that's useful if you're frequently changing something on another sheet and you just want to see a value or multiple values that aren't on the sheet that you're on. So for instance, let's say I wanted to do a watch window with, so you click add watch and then you pick a spot. So I'm going to pick this 84 here. And you'll see I've got now a watch window. You could extend these if you want to see more. But really all I care about is this value is 84. If I now go to the conditional formatting tab and I change 25 to let's say 26, I hit enter, the value here has been updated to 85. And so without switching any sheets, you can you can know that this number changed. I use this a lot when I'm doing error lookups. So if I have um, some error checking going on in my uh, spreadsheet, sometimes I'll, I'll try to make sure that things all tie out and so if I want to use a watch window I can have some sort of a error checker and it can always pop up um, and show me if there are any errors or if you want to edit a formula that uses many different spreadsheets you can you can grab a watch window for each of the things you care about and see that if you maybe if you make a change does something does something happen to the values or does nothing happen so it can be uh, it can be helpful if you want to quickly get a way of looking at something on another sheet without having to reference it within a different sheet so I hope that was useful for you. Make sure to download the most recent Excel Master Workbook on the website, and I look forward to making another lesson next week.